Hey guys, Alec Trelli from Conscious Poker. Welcome back to the YouTube. Today we're gonna be doing an awesome poker vlog. I'm gonna be headed to the win in Las Vegas and play 10, 20, 40, no limit hold'em. This is known as one of the toughest games uh, out there. It is a high stakes game. There's a lot of pros in the game, but it is a lot of fun. It's really fun to battle with regs and um, playing out there, I'm really gonna excited to show you all the nuances and some of the weird, crazy, fun plays and variants that we do with the game here today. So um, be sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Awesome content here on this YouTube. I'm gonna be putting out a lot more of these. Also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Alec Torelli. I put out a lot of reels of individual fun hands that I play play on this stream as well. But I know you're ready to dive in. You want your poker. Let's go to the action. First hand kicks off here. We are playing the stand-up game and it is heads up. So the last player to win a pot pays everyone a bounty. In this case, I think it's $300 or $200. So I'm heads up with the small blind. And if one of us wins a pot, the other one has to pay out a $1,200 or $1,400 bounty. So obviously there's a lot of incentive for us to play a lot of hands and it gets pretty crazy if you've ever played the stand-up game when two players are heads up and they are in the pot together. That is the most fun dynamic. And now he limps for uh, $40 in the small blind. I'm in the middle blind. I just shove here because uh, I need to win this pot and I don't feel like he has a very strong hand. If he did, he'd probably just raise himself. My hand's decent and I just want to get folds. Uh, I only, <laughs> I think he's only 5k effective. So I just ship it in here and it, the big blind folds and now he calls. So I'm like, oh my gosh, is he really trapping me here? Did he like limp with aces and I'm just totally wrecked? Anyway, you have to win the first board in the stand-up game. Let's see what happens. Queen! All right. Hopefully it's good. Ace. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm wrecked. And then he says, you're good. He says, you're good. Second board comes down. King, king, eight, six, seven. And I somehow scoop. So he limp called, I guess, with jack 10, jack 9. Trying to figure out what hand I could scoop here with. But anyway, that's a little bit of stand-up shenanigans here. So we're off to a great start at the win. Next hand, I pick up everyone's favorite, the three deuce offsuit, and we're playing the stand-up game. I'm in the blind. This hand gets limped around, and the flop comes queen, five deuce with two hearts. I need to win a button, so it goes check, check. The limper bets 120, and now I make it 540. I can't really call here out of position, and I'm just hoping he folds something like sixes or a five. Maybe he just has a bluff like ace jack or king jack, but he makes the call. Not my favorite spot, of course. The turn comes a three. So now I make two pair, but the hearts got there. So there's three hearts on the board. I bet 840, and now he insta ships it. At this point, I'm not in love with it just because I feel like a lot of his shoves are going to have some equity. But I also don't feel like he's going to snap shove with the nut flush, for example. He's going to think, he's going to him and haw, he's going to take his time. So at this point, I don't really love the spot, but I think he could just have some random punts here. Like maybe he floated the flop with ace high, turned the nut flush draw, now he's shipping it in. Maybe he has a pair and a flush draw. Ultimately, I'm not loving this spot, and if perhaps my read was different, I might make a very, you know, a hero tight fold here, but I just didn't feel like this guy had it. It's one of those things where you kind of have to be there hard to explain. Anyway, I make the call. He turns over ace five with the ace of hearts we decide to run it twice so two rivers coming here let's see what happens first one bricks off that's me second one bricks off as well pretty nice to scoop here i would be happy with a chop but uh very nice to scoop and uh yeah my read was right it felt good i, I won the, bu the button as well which is huge when you're heads up or three-handed in the stand-up game so off to a great start here at the all right next hand look down at the ace queen of hearts this is an absolute monster in the stand-up game i guess you just have to think of you know, hands and ranges are, you know, 20, 30% wider, especially depending on who's left and how people play. But I end up three betting here out of the blinds to 780. Guy ships it. I obviously snap call. I'm actually pretty happy to call here. It's almost like a tournament with 40 bigs. You're really happy to kind of get it in spots like these. Guy turns over King Jack for the vlog. And uh, we decided to run it twice. I really just want to win the top. I'm always happy to scoop. I'm always happy to scoop, but really just want to win the top here. Please blank off it. It does. Yeah, that's great. I get my little button. I could sit back down. And uh, the second one, free roll for the scoop. Oh, we hit the ace. Can we do it? <laughs> so lucky. Yeah, so lucky. That's a wake up with ace queen. So dude. lucky. <laughs> Boom. There it is. Full scoop. But it really, really feels like a tournament here. Just shipping in, you know, 10,000 in these spots. But uh, anyway, <laughs> nice to double. Things are going well here at the win. All right. This hand is wild. You see the red card in front of me. That means we're playing the stand up and I don't, I don't have a button. So I limp for 40 in the cutoff. And I do this because a lot of hands 
are going to want to limp here when I don't have a button. Just because if you open and you get three bet, now you kind of have to call, but you're in a marginal spot. People play hyper aggressive. So what you see in the stand-up game uh, at the bigger games, at least, is a lot of limping. So I kind of balance things out and limp with aces here because no one's ever going to believe me. Button makes it 300, who also doesn't have a red card, and a pro in the big blind who is sitting down, where we're all sitting down, but he already won a pot, now makes it 1,200. I know he probably has a strong hand just because he doesn't have a lot of incentive to get out of line here because he doesn't need to win a pot. Anyway, I make it 3,600 with aces. None of that really matters because I have aces, so I re-raise here to 3,600, which looks really fishy, right? I limp in the cutoff, there's a raise and then a re-raise, and now I'm just back raising to 3,600. It looks so fishy. It's almost like ridiculous. The button thinks for a while and now makes it 8,000. I'm like, oh my gosh, is this really happening? I have aces and the other guys in the pot. Everyone's in the pot. I was like, oh my God. The big blind now ships it. He ships it for like 20,000. This is almost too much because in some ways it's like likely someone else has aces here. So you almost want him to just fold. I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass. Anyway, uh, obviously with aces here, I have no choice but to call. But at the same time, I still have the button behind me. And so I don't want to just snap call because then it's very obvious that I have aces uh, snap calling two bets here. And so I kind of want to tank for a while, maybe make it seem like I have ace king or queens or you know, kings or something like that, just so that I could induce the button to perhaps call. Anyway, I tank for a while, call it off. The button now goes into the tank. I'm like, what hand is he tanking with? Maybe kings is the only real tank here, right? But if you have kings and there's like a five bet, I know we're playing the stand-up game, but if there's a five bet and a call, a cold call after a limp, I mean, I limped for 40 and put in $20,000. I mean, come on. Uh, it's probably likely someone has aces, but he's not quite a believer yet. He's back in the tank here thinking for quite a while here, even though there's two people all in. Ultimately, he finally makes the call. We count the stacks for a while. The big blind's got, I don't know, 21-9, I cover. And ultimately, this guy finally makes the call. Big blind shows his hand, he has aces. I show my hand, I have aces. The other guy doesn't show. So we know we don't want a queen or a king on this board because we're probably wrecked. I have the hearts and the flop comes down jack eight, seven, all hearts. So I'm on a free roll here with aces to aces in like a 60K pot at 10, 20, 40. How sick is that? I'm on a free roll. Turn bricks off, it's the four of spades. One dime, oh my God, it's a nine. It's a nine, so brutal. And he shows two tens. How tilting is that? I have aces with the heart and the 10 with no heart finds the offsuit nine on the river. And I'm gonna get three quartered in this stupid thing. Anyway, the next board blanks off. Of course, there's no aces left in the deck. So obviously we're chopping. And yeah, I get three quartered here. So brutal. So brutal, guys. We're wrecked. Totally wrecked. Stand up shenanigans. Stand up shenanigans. If you like these hand reviews and breakdowns so far, be sure to check out ConsciousPoker.com, in particular our membership. It has awesome content and a linear step-by-step -step order to build your game from the ground up. We have courses on fundamentals, math, preflop play, hand reading, and hundreds of videos ranging on all poker subjects. We also have an awesome community as well, moderated by me, so you can get direct access uh, to get your questions answered from myself, coaches, and members from around the world. Uh, so be sure to check that out at ConsciousPoker.com. Now, back to the vlog. All right, ace-queen in the stand-up game, and blinds are 10-20-40, but when people raise preflop in a stand-up game when they don't limp, because people start limping a lot, when they raise, they raise a lot bigger, just because if you make it 120, you're going to get everyone to call because there's essentially a bounty in the game and people have to win a pot. So in order to really disincentivize people from calling or to actually make your raises mean anything, you kind of have to make it pretty big. So 10x is kind of what people are doing. This is essentially not 10, 20, 40. It's basically like 51. Uh, it plays basically twice or three times as big when there is stand-up. Um, and so anyway, I make it 400 with ace-queen. The button calls and the big blind tanks forever. He thinks about three betting and ultimately calls, which I guess skews his range a little bit. He probably has something reasonable that is debating between three betting and calling versus debating calling and folding. Anyway, it doesn't change that much. He ultimately calls. We go three ways to the flop. Flop comes down pretty good for me. Ace, jack, seven, rainbow. Big blind checks, of course. At this point, I have to bet here. I don't have a button, but regardless of that, I'm going to be betting multi-way in with this spot with his hand pretty much always. A uh, lot of draws out there that are gut shots or straight draws. 
and uh, definitely want to protect. Also want to get value from worse aces. It's also the stand-up game, so ranges are a lot wider. I mean, I could even have maybe 10-9 offsuit here, uh, or people would at least think that. I bet 800 here into about 1,200. I want to bet on uh, the bigger side just because I want to get value, want to get protection. If I was bluffing, I would bet bigger. This is not a spot or not a style of a game where you want to be betting a third of the pot. You don't want to bet 400 here in a three-way pot with the stand-up game when the button calls. I mean, it's just not really an effective bet size. You won't really bet that size with many hands. So definitely want to be betting bigger here. Uh, turn comes like offsuit king, uh, which is seems kind of scary, but it's really not. I have a queen in my hand, so it's you know very unlikely he has a straight with queen 10. Yeah, he could have king jack maybe, but you know ace king is not in there. He would have three bet pre. So it's kind of a blank card. I just benefit from, from betting. So I just ship it in. I got short here in this game because I lost a big pot and I didn't rebuy because you benefit a lot from being short in the stand-up game. So until you win a button, you kind of want to keep your short stack because you could just ship it in and, and win a button and then you rebuy after you win a button. Anyway, uh, long story short, I ship it in. He thanks for a little a while. It's kind of hard to be bluffing here like on a stone bluff just because um, I'm always going to have a lot of equity if I do shove. I'm not going to have like absolutely nothing. So I think it's hard for him to make a big hero call here. But it is the stand-up game. He it does tank for a while. Um, if I did have a bluff, I would probably ship it in. But when he tanks, I'm obviously just praying for a call. I know my hand is good. And he ultimately makes the fold. And I win my bounty and sit back down. All right, stand-up game is back on. I'm on the button with a great hand, queen-7 offsuit. I make it to 20. Really just hoping people don't three bet and that somehow I win the pot or even like that the big blind just defends and check folds the flop which happens like a reasonable amount of the time so that's kind of what you're banking on in spots like these you're not really playing your hand it's almost like tournament poker where your cards matter a lot less you're just sort of playing the situation anyway flop comes king queen jack with two diamonds and the big blind checks at this point, I'm obviously not loving this spot, but at the same time, I just want to bet small here, like 160, and in case he has like a nine or an ace, or like even a 10, just a random hand that has some equity, I don't want to get bluffed on future cards, but ultimately, I just want him to fold and just win the pot. It's just kind of like a tournament. You just benefit from winning pots because each pot is so important. Uh, it's hard to sort of explain the, the, how the game changes with the stand-up unless you've played it. Anyway, the turn is an offsuit nine, so it's king, queen, jack, nine. Not a great spot for me. He checks. At this point... You know, facing a call on the flop, not loving my hand, uh, can't really do much, just decide to check here. River comes a blank six, and he bets 600. At this point, I'm really just trying to think of, like, what hands can I beat? I do beat some flush draws that check call the flop, maybe, like, you know, seven, five of diamonds. Like, all those hands are in his range. But I do beat ace high. That's kind of, like, the main hand that I beat, just, like, some ace x offsuit that check called the flop. You got to remember, ranges here are very wide. People play a ton of hands in the stand-up game. I think he's pretty much defending any two cards without a button. And so that means he's just going to have more bluffs. And ultimately, yeah, I lose to a straight. Uh, maybe he's betting two pair occasionally that didn't three bet preflop. But he doesn't have that many two pairs just because a lot of those big Broadway hands are going to be three betting preflop. So there's not as many two pairs that he can actually have. Of course, I lose to a straight and I look like an idiot when he just has it. But uh, he is bluffing a decent amount. And I am getting overlay on my pot odds because if I win the pot, I do win the stand-up game. So anyway, I make the call. He has ace high, which is... Such a relief. It's just so nice to win this pot here. It just, it's just great. Anyway, I sit back down, a nice hand, and uh, it's kind of the nature of the stand up here. Pretty wild. All right, last hand of the session. I do not have a button, so I straddle to 80. You see that quite often when people are deep in the stand up game and they need to win a pot. They just straddle because then they're in the pot. They have a better chance of actually winning. So the game actually plays quite a bit bigger in spots like these. Anyway, I straddle to 80, have 10 9 offsuit. The small blind makes it 240. The middle blind calls. I, of course, defended the big blind with 10 9 off. This is one of the benefits of straddling. I would play this. I can't really play this hand under the gun, but in the straddle, I can actually play this hand in position. So let's see if it works out for me. One time, guys. Before we get there, let's see if we could smash that like button for the flop. See if we could flop trips. Thank you. There it is. Thank you for that, guys. You really helped. Flop comes 10, 10, 6. We have a bet of 240 and a call. It's rainbow here, and I feel like my range is super wide for calling. People float these flops all the time with two overs, with gut shots, with ace high. I mean, think about it. We're three-handed in the stand-up game. Uh, and neither of us have a button. None of us have a button in the pot. So uh, I really need to win this pot. I would be floating here with a lot of hands. I would be raising with some bluffs. I ultimately just decide to play it tricky and slow and call with a 10, just because I feel like most of the time these guys have nothing and I could let them rep on later streets. Plus I'm in position. So this is kind of one of the good times to call with a 10. I'm in position. The board is rainbow. If I was out of position and there was a flush draw, I mean, that's a different story. I, You know, you need to protect. But in this spot, I kind of just like calling and just letting them barrel off. Let's just see what happens, right? I could always bet the turn if they checked me, right? Anyway, I call the flop, and I think it just looks really weak here. 
Turn comes an eight of clubs, bringing a, a flush draw. I do not have a club in my hand, but I do pick up a gut shot. They both check to me. Now, at this point, I obviously have to bet for protection. I want to get value, and I could be bluffing, right? It's a stand-up game. I could just be floating and betting the turn. So I bet at 1,100, just like I would do with a bluff. I think it's important in spots like these to just keep your sizing consistent. So always think about... What would I bet here if I was bluffing? Or what would I bet here if I was value betting? And then if you have the opposite type of hand, you do the same thing. And this makes your bet sizes very balanced and it's hard for your opponents to figure out what you have. I bet 1100 and the small blind now calls. He is not a believer. The middle blind now makes this weird raise to 4,400. So he's almost trapping me. I guess it did look kind of fishy when I fly to the flop. He now makes it 4,400. So at this point, I kind of have to ship it in. I mean, if I'm beat, that really sucks. But it's the stand-up game. I mean, he could just be bluffing, repping a 10, thinking that I have air and the other guy has an overpair. I mean, things get wild in spots like these. Anyway, I'm not folding. The only question is just how do I play my hand? Do I call and then hope he bluffs the river and then let the other guy in the pot? I think... I think just shoving here is probably just the best play. You just want to deny equity, get it in, and, you know, take down the pot. So I ship it in here. I uh, don't have much left, about like 8,500. So basically double his bet. And he calls very quickly. He has the 10-5 of clubs. We actually run it twice. On the first board, he hits an 8, so we chop. The second board's a blank, and I end up winning. So I actually three-quarter him, which is a great way to end the session. All right, guys, that's it for this session. I ended up losing $4,100, which honestly, with that ace's hand, was like a 50, 60K pot. Really isn't that bad. Happy to climb back and win some other pots, especially that last one at the end. So be sure to leave your comments below. Let me know which hand was your favorite and uh, any other suggestions, how I can make this YouTube better for you. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on social media at Alec Torelli. And uh, that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for your attention. Cheers.